people. You're going to gather around. I saw a gather around. I always thought I was saying this. I thought, you know, hey, I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I'm going to heaven. I do it. No, he saved me from my sins. I'm going to heaven. I can do whatever I want. Look at the hands. Let's pray. Let's uh, all gather around in a great big giant circle all around. Give me. Let's hold hands. 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 let Come on, let's close the circle. We're going to get a big circle. We're getting a lot bigger circle. This is all for the glory of God, not for us. We're going to give God the glory, right? Let's bow our heads and bow our hearts and go before the Most High, living God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the great God, the great I Am. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the ending. And he's a loving God, he's a merciful God, whose mercy endures forever. Let's bow our heads and bow our hearts. Let's join together and say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Now, hold on, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's do a blessing over the meal. Oh, your hands again. Father God, we come before you today with thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for this glorious food provided from your body through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, there we go. There we go. <laughs> We're going to eat first, and then we'll pass out clothing. All that good. I'm going to sit down for a minute. It's over? Right. Yeah. Let's eat first. Because <laughs> I want to uh, preach while you eat. Give me a plate. I like to preach while people eat. When I was a young boy, my grandma was a strong Christian woman. She preached at me all the time. When I was eating, when I wasn't eating, when I was playing. Yeah, I appreciate you eating tea. Do you go to sleep? Yeah. Yeah, let's eat first. You hungry, brother? No? Church is not going to open their doors unless you win. You know why? You can't put no money in that basket. So I came out of that. This is the church here. Jesus didn't spend his time in the temple. And the uh, scribes and Pharisees couldn't understand. Why is Jesus sitting out there with the sinners? Why is Jesus, he's of the line, the root and offspring of David. He's a king. He's a priest. He's of the priesthood of the Pilsenite. Why is Jesus not in the temple? He's sitting with the sinners, with the publicans, the tax collectors, and the poor. And Jesus overheard him and said, it's not the well that needed physician. It's the sick. This is his appendix time. Ago. We're here because we care about you. We love you and want you to know that Jesus is real. There's only one way. I can come out here every day, not just one day. I can come out here every single day and try to do what is good, try to do what is right. I can feed the poor. I can uh, do any good work that I can think of. I'm not going to get to heaven. It's only one way. That's through Jesus Christ. The God so the world that he gave his only to God, so that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish. But have everlasting life. All you need to do is believe today and have faith. is to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Only take the
world, that, that, that your life will change. We may not understand why we're in a situation that we're in today. We may not comprehend it. But there's a reason. There's a reason for everything. And God is in control. Is anybody here today not, not born again or not saved? Well, there's no time like the present that we may not have tomorrow. A lot of people are talking about the end times. The end days, I've watched since 2011, I've watched one event unfold like dominoes. They're not talking, they're not preaching about this in the church. All right, everybody? No. Nope. I don't care what church you go into. Nobody has a clue what happened. 12 minutes to midnight in 2011. No one has a clue. None of these preachers don't. I've been watching a long time. I've been in the prophecy a long time. 12 minutes to midnight. 2010, bringing in 2011, 5,000 red winged blackbirds fell out of the sky in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. The very same time, thousands upon thousands of cherubims died. They fell out of the sky in Italy. An entire lake in Indonesia in 2011 formed this real eerie mist. All the life of the sea died. You got, what is it, Christchurch, New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. Landslide, mudslide. Earthquakes in diverse places. 9.0 earthquake and tsunami. 2011. Earth pretty much crippled. Uh, Volcanic action. Nuclear facility. The of Giant tsunami. First, just recently, and this has been going on. So we're seeing the birthday of uh, Isaiah. Uh, the book of Isaiah says we're going to feel them, and we've been feeling them since 2011. And it's estimated now. Look what happened in Michigan last week. Up in Mobile. Major flooding, but the ground just opened up. It started swallowing houses. And cars just being stuck into the ground with a giant sinkhole that just was destroying the entire town. Mm -hmm. And this thing going on. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know when our last second is going to be on this earth. Whether it's. Uh, we die a natural death, or he calls us home. So if you were to, let me ask you, if you were to die today, do you know where you're going to go? Do you know? There's only one place. There ain't about the end good. It's, it's not about doing good work. Just want to see my good work, but that's not what it's about. You got to know that you know that you know. If you were to die today, where you're going to go? You only have two choices. They definitely don't want to go to hell. No. no. <laughs> right. We ain't got Jesus Christ. Well, I don't want to preach too much on uh, too much on prophecy, but we're, we're living in the very last seconds of the last days in the churches today don't see it. They haven't seen the body. Anything can happen any second. You gotta make sure that you're not sinning and you're Living for Jesus Christ. I just watched on Fox News. I was trying to debunk this, but I couldn't. They had a, a, a news article that it was Laura uh, Ingram. And I couldn't believe what I seen when you click on the closed caption and talking about Trump. Yeah, you mean that Donald Trump that uh, is Messiah. swooning over the real Messiah, Barack Obama. I mean, we're talking about yeah, that. Yeah, it was written on about TV. The who the church calls the Antichrist on the world stage. Well, the Bible doesn't call him the Antichrist. It calls him a man of sin. He's, he's in the shadows. He's about to come out. This world is about to go into great tribulation. It's all happening right now. The economy yeah. falls one second from yeah. now. Everything's going to change. In a, in, a, in a blink of an eye, everything can change. For every one of us. In the book of the Revelation, Jesus talked about the seven churches which were in Philadelphia. Which we, we know today is the most important part of Turkey. And he was kind of going over all of the seven churches. And only one was going to be spared from the time of Trump was coming. One church. One church. And these are church people. These are church people. <laughs> these are these are the saved. These are people, yeah, they're So don't think of the Lord again. I'm saved. I'm fine. I said a little prayer. Yeah. I said the sinner prayer. Everything's good. That doesn't mean you're going I'm to heaven. I'm going to heaven, no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, put him in your heart. And not sin. He, he tells us to stop sinning. 
When you stop sinning, he goes, go and sin no more. The spirit, you stop sinning. The spirit and, and, of these seven churches are in the world. And you'll have a personal relationship with him. Go ahead. The church of uh, Thyatira, we see it in the world today. The church that bows down the statues and prays to the saints and prays to Mary worship. We know that's the Catholic church. You can't pray to Mary. Jesus said to this church, I, I know your good works. Yeah. I know that you have done this and given to the poor, but I've got something against you. If you go, change, and quit bowing down to these statues and idols, uh, he's going he's to yeah, worship in idols. Worshiping idols. Worshiping that Mary statue. He's going to take your golden yeah. candlestick out of his place. We find in the book of Revelation that the church is the candlesticks. The day church of the world today is the church of Laodicea. That's the prosperity gospel. That's what the preacher is telling you. Get to this ministry. I just need to minister on the internet. $54 million for a new private jet. He's got three other jets. And this is a prosperity gospel, but uh, if you give to this ministry, God's going to pour out tenfold upon you, and you're going to have money, and you're going to have wealth. And that's the church of Laodicea. That's the church Jesus said, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. So There's only one church, the church of Philadelphia, that is going to be spared from everything that's to come. So we got to be the bride of that church. An event is going to come that's going to happen any moment. It's going to happen within a twinkling of an eye. It's going through the Apostle Paul. In 1 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul. And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with him in the clouds to meet the Lord. There's going to be an event. The church, the true church, is going to be taken. And you don't want to be left here. You don't want to be left here. I'm done preaching. Hey, uh, Pastor. Pastor. Uh, let, let them know about the uh, volcanic, volcanic um, that's going on right now. For everybody, you just come and see me. We'll go for a walk, and I'll tell you about it. It's up between you and God. It's not for to see. It's not to get an altar call. How many churches? And I feel better get up there too. That doesn't mean it. That's not. That's not the insane. It's personal between you. Personal between you and God. You can find him. You can cry out to Jesus in the privacy of your own home. Like my grandmother said, but you can find Jesus in the bathroom. Dad, in the laundry room. While you're right washing here in your mind right now while you're standing here. You start yeah. preaching to him in your you mind. Don't right to, now. You don't have to go up to an altar call. No. Jesus is pretty busy. He's not in all of these churches. He's out there where the poor are, the hungry are. He's a, trying to attend the lost. He's in the alley with the junkie that's about to boot up. And he's weeping. Everybody in that church, they're, they're already born again. He's out here. This is the church. Right Amen. God bless you guys. Yep.